And the more we learn about the man suddenly thrust into the spotlight of the House speakership, the more he resembles his version of the modern Republican Party. It's a little unfortunate considering the gravity of the times in which we live, but it makes perfect sense. Speaker Mike Johnson, that's his name if you haven't committed it to memory yet, Mike Johnson appears so far to be a walking, talking, living, breathing, rather self-righteous laundry list of inconsistencies and at times outright contradictions. Just listen to the way he described himself to Sean Hannity last night when asked about his previous opposition to same-sex marriage, marriage equality. Anybody that knows me will tell you this is true. I am a rule of law guy. I made a, a career defending the rule of law. I respect the rule of law. When the Supreme Court issued the Obergefell opinion, that became the law of the land, okay? I respect the rule of law, but I also genuinely love all people, regardless of their lifestyle choices. Lifestyle choices. 1982 is calling and they want their words back. So a rule of law guy, where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, the, the Supreme Court nominees when asked about Roe v. Wade. So coming from a guy who voted to decertify the quote, most secure election in American history, that was a quote from a lifelong Republican because the new speaker's candidate couldn't accept that he'd lost. That's our rule of law guy. But it doesn't stop there, unfortunately. On the potential expulsion of his esteemed colleague, one George Santos, who entered a not guilty plea on a superseding indictment today, here's Speaker Mike Johnson once again. Here's the reality, Sean. We have a four-seat majority in the House. Um, it, it is possible that uh, that number may be reduced even more in the, in the coming weeks and months. And so we'll have what may be the most razor thin majority in the history of the Congress. Um, we have no margin for error. And so uh, George Santos is due due process, right? He is, uh, I, my understanding is, I think he's appearing in a federal court uh, tomorrow. And uh, we have to allow due process to play itself out. Uh, that's what our system of justice is for. Saying the quiet part out loud seems to be the headline there, quote, we have a narrow margin. Says a lot, right? Now, if you are new Republican speaker, um, Tim, what's his name again? Help me. Mike, Mike Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you, you have a lot of explaining to do already, yeah? Uh, yeah, I and mean, he has a really long laundry list and track record of policy positions that are extremely unpopular with mainstream uh, America right now. And you, you listed one of them uh, talking about, I guess, my lifestyle choices. But he's had a lot of attacks on my lifestyle choices. He he did, wasn't just opposed to marriage equality. He, he was writing op-eds and, and part of a legal team that was trying to fight against the effort to over, uh, on the Lawrence v. Texas Supreme Court case that overturned the Texas law that made sodomy illegal so gay sex illegal so he, he was he wanted to criminalize people for gay sex he has said he wanted hard labor for anyone in louisiana that that uh that uh, did an abortion right so that is how anti-abortion he is he's not just like oh i'm a 15-week abortion federal ban guy no he's a no exception zero week and if you uh do an abortion even for a uh you know young woman that was raped you know or a young woman that that um, you know, there's incest. Uh, you should the punishment for that should be hard labor. I and mean, these are not popular positions. So he has a lot of explaining to do on that. And and I think that on the rule of law point, the one that really stands out, obviously, is his effort to try to overturn the election. Uh, and I think the most telling thing about what happened when he became speaker, I think it's just kind of been lost a little bit in all the craziness, mm -hmm. was when Congressman Aguilar gave the nominating speech for Hakeem Jeffries, mm -hmm. and he was saying that that they are putting up a speaker that was one of the architects of the effort to overturn the election and install Donald Trump mm -hmm. a, as an unelected autocrat. Anna Paulina Luna, the congresswoman from Florida, mm -hmm. shouted, damn right, mm -hmm. and everybody cheered. Mm -hmm. That's where they're at on this. Like this supposed rule of law guy, his team was saying, damn right, this, uh, we were trying to overturn the election. That's and, very and, telling. And we, we throw around the word architect because it applies to both the executive branch policy apparatus, right. if you will. And that was the architect of that was Eastman, who wrote out a plan that he admitted was unconstitutional and illegal. It violated the Electoral Count Act. This is through 
um, testimony from other lawyers produced by the January 6th Select Committee, and that it would lose in the United States Supreme Court nine to nothing. But the but the, the the architecture on the Hill was joining this Texas mm -hmm. case that was designed to throw out the votes, not of Texas voters, but of four That's other right. swing states. That's who they picked. Well, it's interesting because one of the reasons that I've been thinking that you had not really heard from him in the past is because they wanted to find a way to marginalize him because he was so extreme. But now that person is running Congress. Have you and, met the Republicans? That's not, they just and, didn't and, get and, to and him and yet. It's, <laughs> right, they just didn't get to him yet. And, that, and that's scary, right? Because as he said, and he's, he's talking about the, the margins that the Republicans have, they are in no way strategic. They are firmly ideological because if they were strategic, they would have actually started talking about perhaps putting more women up for leadership positions. How about at least Stefanik from New York? Because if Akeem Jeffries realizes how new, important New York is to getting the majority mm -hmm. back, hey, why don't we put up at least Stefanik to say, you know what, New York's important to us too. But nope, that didn't happen. And it would not happen, not in this particular Congress, not with that Republican Party. And so when you, and so the, the don't say gay bill, which he wanted to make national, by the way, yeah. all of these extraordinarily, extraordinarily extreme men, uh, measures, now that person is running the House. And I also think about the sort of split screen. This was happening at a time when you had more and more uh, Trump defendants uh, flipping and, yeah. and, 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 and uh, saying that they would plead guilty for whatever outcome. I'm was sure there. the rule of law guy is so excited. So excited about that. <laughs> and what's interesting to me is that on the one hand, you've got people flipping on Trump, but on the other hand, he has still found a way to force his ideology through Congress. Yeah. So, uh, so one wonders, you know, is he going to be running the Republican Party from prison? Well, here's the other thing. It's, it's, it's worse than that, right? He had to pass a purity test That's and right. before, the, before the exact same conduct that three Trump lawyers pleaded guilty to crimes for engaging in. Uh, yeah. Um, and he was not only that, but he was whipping other members and That's trying right. to bring other people into the scheme. Right. Right. So it, was, it wasn't so as the, the thing that gets you a, a plea deal in right. Georgia, Georgia gets you the over the line. The in the House. That's right. Yeah, no, that was that's right. exactly what they were looking that's for. Right. I and mean, that was, as you said, that's the litmus test, right? right? This is why Tom Emmer couldn't get in, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they tried to put him up and he was rejected in four hours. <laughs> it was two, three hundredths of a scaramucci. Tom Emmer was picked because <laughs> uh, he didn't pass that litmus test, right? And so this guy uh, was. You know, in order to get the speakership, this was the key. That group of MAGA 20 that opposed Kevin at the start, you needed them. And because they're nihilists, they didn't care if the government was working. They didn't care about anything. And the only way to get them on board was to put forth somebody that was not just like kind of on board with the coup, but was really part of the MAGA organization that pushed forward the coup. That is what, that is what Mike Johnson Which wants. Which puts him on the other side of Mike Pence, right? Yeah. Who, standing mm -hmm. in the chamber, didn't vote for I mean, yeah. I, I think this is what you have to sort of, you know, I think as a Republican, sift, sift through this and help people understand. He's to the right of Mike Pence on questions of democracy. He's to the right of, of most sort of evangelical religious TV figures that are that populate right wing or, or intersect on on issues of marriage equality, which has 70 to 80 percent public support abortion, which has 60 to 7 percent public support. I mean, he's so far beyond even the mainstream of the right wing yeah. chatter sphere. He has Mike Pence's most extreme positions on social issues, and then you pair that with Donald Trump's most extreme positions on democracy, on democracy right? Yeah. And that is who they have put forth to run the conference because they needed somebody that could get people from both of those camps. And I would just say very quickly, all of this conversation about, you know, rule of law, he's also a big proponent of states' rights, and we know how dangerous that is. Mm -hmm. We know how far back that goes in the history of our country, particularly used around uh, uh, po uh, post-slavery and segregation. So all of this conversation about rule of law. He did an interview saying that he is firmly rooted in the Bible. Uh, and yeah. yeah, you want to have that selective piety, great. And think about uh, but, the school stuff uh, and the Bible. He was exactly pushing right. on kids that, that they should be reading about how there were dinosaurs on Noah's Ark. Now, I'm not one that, to mock anybody's religious right, views, right. but, 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 but if the right. government's right. going to be deciding what kids are reading in schools, right. I don't know. I don't know that we want this guy to be the one that's determining. That's right. well, and, and I'm glad you brought it back to the rule of law. The rule of law only served as a talking point to say that as long as marriage equality is the rule of the land, I will abide by the laws. But he doesn't but say that he supports it. No, 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 that's exactly right. Because, and, and mind you, 
he's going to go against everything that the national polls are saying uh -huh. because what they'll do is find a way to make this state specific apparatus work for them I mean, that is a 10, 20, 30 year strategy. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, regardless of what the National Post say, this is extraordinarily ideological. It is it is it is it's incredibly dangerous. And again, do not be fooled. Everything that they're talking about, they're moving resources, they're moving strategy to the state level. And as a Democrat, we have got to be prepared for that. What does that mean? Well, that means, number one, we need to be better resourced. We need to, like, put all the money that we can in the states. I think Hakeem's doing a good job in New York. Mm -hmm. California's going to be really important. But we've got to, and I'm a big proponent of this, down-ballot races. Mm -hmm. All of those down-ballot races really do matter because they lift the ticket, and we just got to focus on that. I was wondering if this was awkward, right? This wasn't Hannity's guy. Hannity got behind and whipped votes for Jim Jordan. Yeah. So I, I had a little bit of a, hmm, I wonder how that went. Yeah. Well, you know, Hannity's the guy that they call out of the bullpen when they need to puff somebody up. Okay, that's not the <laughs> tough interview. All right, I mean, I, I can, I'll admit it, guilty as charged. I, uh, back in the day when I used to be a Republican, I threw some people on Hannity when they needed to do a little cleanup. You know, Mike Johnson, is this guy ready for the big leagues? I, I think uh, he looked good on paper in the weird way that Republicans needed him to look good, right? Like he was on board for the coup and, and you know, he didn't make anybody mad, right, in any of the different parts of the conference. But, uh, but you know, he has not had to take any fastball pitches. He hasn't had to answer out the fact that he he wasn't just out there on, on the – you know, the technical sides of the coup. He was out there saying the Dominion voting machine. The stuff you know, that cost Fox $800 yeah, million. million. Dollars. He was out there, yeah, pushing the crazy scandals about how our voting machines were broken, the crazy conspiracies out there. He hasn't had to answer for that. He hasn't had to answer the tough questions on his gay positions. He hasn't, he did some softball questions on guns last night. Mm -hmm. He hasn't had to answer about the fact that he's for constitutional carry, extreme, the most extreme mm -hmm. gun views. And so Opposed I think by they, 80 percent. Yeah, so it wasn't Hannity's guy, but I think they put him out there to try to get him the paces. But even then, you saw that interview and, and he gives the weird comment about how, well, it's not the gun's fault, but it's, it's the problem of our hearts. And it's like, well, oh, is that really what to say? Right. America's, I mean, he, 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 he leapfrogged right over yeah. Abbott, who goes to the mental health. He leaped right, right over, right. you know, that to, um, I guess, the Republican so our, platitude is, is our heart. Our hearts and our I, I think heart. Democrats should call us bluff and say, we'll solve it any way you want. Um, but they don't, they don't really actually seem interested in doing anything about yeah. our hearts either. No. All right. No.